Welcome to the Orlando Local Show, episode number three. Thank you very much for joining us on the Orlando Local Show. Today, we're going to be talking about taking great photos with your smartphone. Come back home with some great memories of your Walt Disney World vacation. Take it around the rest of Orlando for all week here. Thank you very much for joining us. We really appreciate you. My name is William Beam. Hi, I'm Lee Beam. And we just kind of wanted to go over a little bit of helping you take better photos with your smartphone. And that doesn't mean that you can't bring a DSLR or a point and shoot or something else like that. But there are times that you just really don't want to lug that stuff around. We both are into photography. We enjoy it. I've got another site, uh, williambeam.com. That's actually my photography blog. But we have a lot of fun taking photos. But there are times that you just don't want to be messing around with a big, heavy camera. That's right. I mean, it's a vacation. You want to spend time with your family or your friends and just enjoy yourself. And there, there are times to take photos and you know, get seriously into it. But this is not a photography thing. This is for a real people who want to capture memory. So nobody's going to critique your photos. This is just a, some tips and hints to help you get the best out of yours so you can be happy with the memories you capture and share some stuff you can be proud of with your friends and family. And don't think that just because you've got a smartphone, let's say if you're a photographer and you've got a nice DSLR, I know we both do. We love our photos that we get from that. But that doesn't mean that we can't get good quality photos from a decent smartphone. And there are actually a lot of advantages to taking a smartphone over a DSLR, not the least of which is it's easy to carry with you. You don't have to lug something big and heavy. That's absolutely true. And it's quite liberating, actually, when you're used to carrying the big camera bag. Because I did it for years, every day, in and out of the parks. And then I think it was Independence Day 2014. I just decided I'm, I'm not messing with a big camera bag. And I just took my smartphone Oh, wow. <laughs> it, it really does change your experience. The other thing is you don't stick out like a sore thumb. Almost everybody else is out there taking pictures with their smartphone. And you don't look like you're just standing out with, with the big camera waiting for everybody else to get out of the way, which is never going to happen. At a first <laughs> <No>. <laughs> part. You're, you're going to have people in your photos. So just kind of embrace that already. It's lightweight. It's convenient. And it's also online. As soon as you take a shot, you don't have to wait to go back to your room, load it on your computer, or even worse, if you didn't bring a laptop to go back home, you can just go ahead and edit it right there on your phone, maybe while you're having a meal or sitting down, taking a break, and then share it online at the moment from where you are. That's good for, you know, if you want to have the geotagging and check it in where, where you're going, or also if you just want to keep your family and friends a little jealous of the fact that you're in a park and having fun there or not. Oh, that's wonderful. That's a great thing to use. Just... Here I am now while everybody else is at work. Check the view from my office. I'll tell you what else is nice about the instant sharing ability with taking it on, uh, taking photos on your smartphone. Um, and I did that, I think, on our last full on vacation to Walt Disney World. I actually used social media as a, a kind of like an online journal. You've got a time and date stamp. You can put your captions on there. You get people's comments on there. And it actually is quite an interesting little journal. And sometimes I just like to go back and do a search on Facebook and get back into that month and read over those few weeks where we were there. I know we used to do long vacations. It's just a nice little way to document it. I'm, I mean, I'm a scrapbook and journal kind of person, so I always enjoyed that. But this was my first time doing it with social media. And it's just, it's great. But you couldn't do that with instantly with your um, big, any, well, any kind of camera where you have to transfer things from a memory card. No, you really can't. And, you know, obviously you've got most of the smartphones are going to also have built-in video there if you want to do video as well as your snapshots. But one of the things that I found what was just last weekend, we were taking some photos at a restaurant and I put them up. I didn't actually put all the photos on Facebook, but Facebook read my photos and said, oh, we built a little video for you of all of your photos. And they, you know, you can kind of style it to music and, and a theme. And it actually turned out pretty nice. It was nice. I was surprised. I didn't even know they had anything like that. It, they didn't give it to me. Oh, you don't have it yet. Um, no, nope, I took photos as well at the restaurant, but maybe yours were better. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm, I guess I must be special. I got <laughs> Facebook features before you did. You did. But, but it was it was a nice thing. We went to a restaurant. I just took some snapshots of the exterior, the interior. I took some photos of the food and put it together. And Facebook organized it into a, a really nice little, what maybe about a 30 second to one minute video. Yeah. of my photos of the day. If that. Yeah. And so that means that, and it, and it had music to it and it had a theme. You could change the music depending on the mood that you're in. And that's a nice little thing that you're going to get on your smartphone if you've got a Facebook account that you're not going to get from any of your other cameras. That's true. And, and, and I mean, if you're really picky about how you put it together, there are apps that you can install, I think, to, that would be able to do that. 
The other thing about a, a smartphone, I was just having a look at some of my photos from one of our first Disney vacations. And I had a point and shoot at the time. And really the iPhone photos I'm getting, and I've just got the 5S, so I'm not even into the, the newest one. The photos that I'm getting with the iPhone now are probably comparable in quality to the ones that I was taking with a camera that cost me, you know, a few hundred bucks in 2008. They, they really are. I've got iPhone 6S Plus, so it's the big old phablet. And it's got an even better camera inside of that. I think it's a 12 megapixel. So the size or the resolution you're getting is as good as my old D700. Yeah, which and, is pretty good. And it's got really nice clarity and contrast. And then you can just kind of enhance that further with some of the apps that are available out there. So I'm honestly, these days, I'm, I'm not going to give up my DSLR by any means. Well, if we're going to be moving around or we're going to be on the go, I'm kind of quite happy for the most part with just taking my iPhone. Yeah, I think cameras on phones have generally, I mean, even if it's not a few onto an Android or some other kind of smartphone, they've, they've all really kind of, you know, up the standards with, with the cameras. Because I know not, not too many years ago, I remember, you know, having my, I, I was into my photography then already. And I would see people walking around parks and taking their family snapshots with a phone and and at the time, I'd think to myself, <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, but now, there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, they've really upgraded these things nicely. Well, there's a, I can't remember which one, whether it's, a, whether it's a Windows phone or an Android phone. It's definitely not one of the iPhones. But it's already up to 50 megabyte photos. I mean, that's more than my Nikon D800 as well. That's a 36 megapixel. Yeah. And if you've got a 50 megapixel camera in something that fits in your back pocket, that's just a tremendous amount of resolution. I tell you why it's not an iPhone because you need expandable memory to store yeah. those things. <laughs> That's true. You're going to be going out there. What do you need? Obviously, we're talking about taking a smartphone. It doesn't have to be an iPhone. I mean, if you're an Android user, a Windows phone user, or even a BlackBerry with a camera, as long as you've got something and, and you've got reasonable quality with your photos, you can take better photos with you. Oh, you absolutely can. Yeah. There are a couple of things we want to recommend that you want to bring with you, though, to help you get there. And one of them is for stability. The other one's kind of for reach. And what we mean that for stability, there are times like maybe if you want to shoot fireworks, you're going to need something stable to hold that phone. You're going to need, and it's, you can't just necessarily handhold fireworks and get good shots. No, because you need the little shutter to be a bit slower. Yeah. And that's also going to take some apps. Not every uh, camera app on the iPhone or some of the other phones is going to let you adjust your shutter speed. And one of the things you need to be able to do is find some apps that will allow you to take manual exposure and then you can hold the shutter open for a few seconds if you're going to be taking fireworks shots. Yeah, because the auto one doesn't work very well, generally. No, it, it really doesn't, because it's it's going to take a picture. It thinks you're taking a still photo. It doesn't realize that the fireworks are climbing through the sky and you need to leave it the exposure open for the whole time. So you're going to have to have a program that's going to let you keep the exposure running for a few seconds. Yeah, and not fire the flash. Something else you want to keep in mind, if you're going to be someplace where it's wet... And that could be anywhere in Florida, usually during the summertime. But if you're going to be if you're going to be going off to one of the water parks or going on a wet ride, you're probably going to want some kind of waterproof protection. And that's a brilliant idea, not only because it's going to keep your camera phone safe, but because you get some great shots that you probably wouldn't want to have another camera out there. You want something that's going to be waterproof, so you can take it into those areas and get shots where the fun is. And that fun is going to be like. Cali River Rapids over at uh, Animal Kingdom. Yeah, I took photos on there with, with my iPhone. I've taken some video as well with iPhone stuff in the pools and in the water parks. thing is, when, when you go out, I think we'll we'll cover that a little bit later, but you really want some way to protect it. And we'll, we'll get into some little tips and hints and things you can do, benefits of having a waterproof, a good waterproof pouch for it. You don't need to splurge on a, a new camera. And when we talk about reach, one of the things, first things people think about is a selfie stick. But if you're going to Disney parks, no selfie sticks allowed. That's just in the parks, right? I think you can use you can use them at the resorts in downtown Disney. Am I right? Or I'm pretty sure you can. Yeah. But just the, checking the parks, changed. yeah, the parks they have signs, no selfie sticks. So it's not yeah. just on rides. I think it's in the parks as well. But there are probably some things that you can do there to get around that. On you can have like little mini tripods. You can have a little holder for your phone. There's a couple of things you know where there's almost like a steady cam kind of thing, and you're kind of holding a pistol grip, and it keeps. If you're going to be walking and shooting video, it keeps your video steady on the, yes. there. Because the there is some stabilization inside the iPhone. I know that some of the Android phones also have that. But it's never as good as having real physical optical stabilization. Yeah. You've got your gear. You know why you want to take the phone. Now, let's go ahead and talk about some of the ways that you can just get better photographs. And we're going to start off with really one of the keys is better composition. Most people, if you watch them, walk into the parks and you watch them, 
they're standing straight up, they're holding the phone, maybe just a little, right up at their eye line. You know, they're kind of, they got their arms out like chicken wings, holding the phone in front of them. Everybody takes the same photo from the same point of view. Yeah. And something else to remember, if you're using a the front facing camera for a selfie, the picture quality is not as good as it is with the main camera. So mm. it might actually be worth just asking somebody, would you mind taking a picture of me? Yeah, exactly. Because like the, the camera quality on the front is lower than the one on the back. So as much as possible, you really want to take those photos using the rear facing camera. Yeah. As far as getting your composition better, there's a couple of things that you need to look at. First off, if you've got grid lines to turn it on, do that. I mean, one of the basic things that people teach in photography is something called rule of thirds. And that's where the grid line helps you. Put your subject, the, the interesting part of whatever you're going to photograph on one of those lines. It doesn't matter if it's one of the vertical lines or one of the horizontal lines. If you can take a photo of somebody and you can put like the corner or the intersection of uh, one of those grid lines right on their eyeball, that gives you a pretty good chance for taking a really nice photo of somebody. Yeah, I mean, you can crop something, but then you lose some of your resolution. You get like the grainy look or the pixels in it and things like that. The other thing is to fill your frame. You know, have a look and see what do you want to get in the photo. And if you're not able, before you start to zoom, see if you can get closer because that will also keep your quality higher. You know, there are times you're going to have to use the zoom. There's nothing you can do about that. It's the reality of taking photos. But if you can get yourself closer, it will minimize the the degradation of the, the photo quality. And that's why when we're taking photos of other people, I mean, every once in a while we're out at the park and someone said, will you please take our photo? We'll say, yeah. And then we'll ask them one other thing. We'll say, step forward. They want to have something in the background. For example, they may want to have Cinderella Castle in the background. They may want to have, what's that ship over at Little Mermaid? I don't know, a ship. <laughs> it's a ship with the Little Mermaid on the front, yeah. Ariel. You know, there's different scenes there and you want to have those in the background. That's great. The background fills up a lot of your frame. But if you stand way back as close to that background as you can, you're going to be very small in your photos. So you want people to step forward so you can see their faces. And this kind of coincides with what I was talking about with using the rule of thirds. Have them move over maybe to be on like one edge. You don't want them dead center in the middle of everything. That's probably one of the most That's boring shots true. you can get. Yeah. Have them stand, you know, like a, a third of the way over. Have the scene, you know, whether it's going to be Splash Mountain or Cinderella Castle or whatever it may be behind them, but get them forward so that you can see their faces bright and shiny, you know, in the photo. And yet you still have the, the background scene there. That's right. And the other thing to remember is if you're going to plan on sharing these things, just bear in mind that you might need a crop. For example, if you're going to be sharing on Instagram or you're going to be sharing on Facebook or Twitter, you're going to have a different kind of photo format. So it might even be worth taking two photos, you know, take one in a square crop format and one in the, the sort of landscape style. And then it's minimal adjustments to make. Or keep in, you know keep that in mind when you're when you're taking the photo the first time. That's true, and because you always want to think about how you're going to use the photo. It's, it's nice to get the photo. If you were going to be shooting and you want to put this on Pinterest, you may want to take a vertical photo so you've got room for it to go yeah. vertically. If you're going to take take photos for home or something to put on your computer, you're going to want to have them in landscape modes that are horizontally. If you're going to put them on something with a square crop. Maybe that advice that I gave you as far as doing that grid isn't quite going to line up the way you want to. You know what? You may want to do something goofy. I've got a friend who every time he goes out and takes a photo of himself, he only does half of his face. <laughs> yep, the other half's cut off. You know, it's, it's his signature. It's, it's his look. And yeah. uh, and he even does that with other people. So if there's going to be two of them in the photos, like half of this face over here and half of this face over there. It's okay. weird. It's weird, but it works for him. The other things we want to think about with composition, I mentioned this earlier. Everybody's standing full height taking the photo. Don't do that. Get high, get low, take your photos from interesting angles. You don't have to be dead center in front of it. You can be off to the side, taking a, an angle shot. You can be crouching down. You can almost, you know what? If you want to lie down on the ground and take the photo of something and just make it look really impressive and super big, do it. People are doing a lot worse. Than move around. Disney yeah, world. move around. And actually getting down low when you're taking photos often works really well. You know, get down on your knees. I know it's not possible for everybody, but if you're able to move and you're in a situation where you can do so, try it. Take a few and see which one you like best. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. Take multiple photos of the same thing. You don't know which one's really going to work out best for you. I remember one time I was out there with my big DSLR. I had it on a tripod and I had the angle all scouted out what I wanted. And there was this guy walking in front of me with his, he actually had a flip phone rather than a smartphone. And he saw me with my camera and said, oh, that must be a good shot. So he stopped right dead in front of me flipped his camera up, pointed it up with my subject, went with his thumb, took a shot, and then kept on walking. 
<laughs> uh, yeah, that's that, that's going to be just as good. You put a lot of thought into that. But, Actually, I had something similar happen, but it, it was somebody being really sweet. Um, I was at the Flower and Garden Festival and I'd been at one of the food booths on opening day. And I wanted to take a photo of the dessert I had in my hand. So I went and found a little spot around the on the side of the lake and I kind of held my dish up so that I had the lake and the I think it was the Tory gate or whatever it was as the background then took a photo with my phone and um, there was a couple standing eating the same dessert that I was eating at the table right next to me and the guy said well damn he said I guess your photo is going to be better than mine (laughs) which is quite kind of sweet you know sometimes you just got to do what you got to do you got to move to the where the angle is to get the best view of your subject the other thing you need to do is you really need to pay attention to the light and that's Where is the direction of the light coming from? What time of day is it? The best shot of your subject may not necessarily be, you know, high noon. And probably it's most likely it's probably not going to be that. Your softest light is going to be, you know, sunrise and sunset. That's when you're going to get beautiful sky. You're going to get nice soft light. You're going to get some interesting shadows on your subject because the light is kind of coming in from the side. And nice colors as well. You actually see the colors because in the middle, in the harsh sunlight, you kind of get that almost gray moonlight style washed out look yeah. know, everything's kind of faded and you know some of the if you're taking pictures of your family some of the worst things you can do is is take that out in the bright sunshine we've all seen this you know there's photos of kids and they're holding their hand up on their forehead and they're squinting and you they can't open their eyes because the sun is shining right in them yeah and you got plenty of light on their face to take a photo but they look horrible yeah what what it also helps is if you move yourself into the shade to minimize the glare on the, the camera lens mm-hmm. if you can move the subjects a little bit they're not squinting in the sun. But I just want to say something as well. I mean, this is, that's, you know, we mentioned before, this is not a photography critique or anything. Nobody's going to knock your photos. I would rather have a photo that captures the moment with my kid and I have it forever. And I'd rather have a bad photo that's part of my memories of something special than have nothing. So don't feel like it's a fail if you take a photo and it doesn't come out great. You know, try again, do the best you can. Sometimes the conditions are not going to play nicely. No, and the moment that you want to capture, you know, may not happen on a schedule. Yeah. But if you're going to be taking photos that you've planned that you know that you want to take, we're hoping to give you some little tips here that will say, here are the best conditions that you can take them in. Here are some things that you can do to get better results from your photos. Doesn't mean you should not take photos because, oh, the sun's at noon. They said not to take it then. No, if your kid is doing something cute, if your wife is doing something cute or your husband is licking an ice cream cone, take the shot. Yeah, get it. Just get get. This is your vacation. Get your memories. Nobody's going to knock them and you don't have to share everything with everyone. These are yours. Exactly. So there's there's some you're going to keep. There's some that you're going to look at and say, no, I really don't want to keep that one. Delete it. That's fine. No one knows until you share it as to what kind of photos you took. Yeah, I really didn't want people to think we stuck up photographers because we're actually quite nice, right? Mm, I don't know if I'm nice. I'm 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 stuck up sometimes. I'm really sweet. I eat lots of candy. That's true. She she's sweet. She even has a theme song now too. We might get to that later if she gets into a <laughs> rant. But but I I agree. It's like you you want to capture the moments. That's the most important thing. And what we're offering is advice that some of the things you can probably make a little bit better if you know about them. And a few of you that have got photography experience probably know these tips. And if you haven't thought of this before and you're wondering, why does somebody always get these nice photos and mine never look quite like that? Well, it's just because of these little tips as far as how you do your composition, how you understand the use of light, and a few things about post-processing that we're going to get into. And all those things together can really make some brilliant photos. And there's no reason why you can't create Create those on your uh, iPhone or Android or Windows phone. Absolutely. And it gives you something you can go and show off a little bit. Why not? Absolutely. All right. So we were talking about direction of light. Of course, you know, the there's going to be indoors or outdoors. There's always going to be some directional light, whether it's overhead or off to the side. You want to kind of use that to your advantage, particularly if you're taking portraits. And you want to have your subject probably looking toward the light. But that doesn't mean that you have to have your back to the light or they have to be blinded. So you can move off to the side. And one of the things you're going to notice when you move off to the side and their face is kind of going into the light, you're going to see an interesting shadow develop on their cheek. That is good. Shadows are your friend. You want to light some things. You want to light the eyes. And then you want to let other parts fall into shadow. And that actually makes your subject more interesting. It does. And it also defines the features. Exactly. So if you've got someone with sharp cheekbones and you flash a lot of light at them, you know, they kind of lose that because there are no shadows there to define the, the character of the person. Soft light. Soft light is is wonderful. But you know what? Hard light works in in situations too. Some things, you definitely want hard lights. For example, we were talking about the water parks. Yes. If you've got a nice, bright, sunny day, it, it could be high noon, but you want that hard light coming from above because the, when the water's throwing up in the air and you've got the little bubbles and all this other sort of stuff, 
that adds character to dimension to the water. It does. It glistens. So it, and hard light works nicely for silhouettes as well. You can oh, make absolutely. some interesting photos with silhouettes. Absolutely true. Something to keep in mind about flash on smartphones. Flash is very, very weak. I think if you pull someone into the shadows to keep, you know, a harsh sunlight off of them, it doesn't hurt to turn on the flash and light up their face. You don't, what last thing you want is to have somebody, you take the photo of them and then you can't really make out their face later in, in the photo. So turn on a flash in certain situations. But you need to be close enough for the flash to, for the light from the flash to hit them. And it's only going to be maybe two feet for yeah, that. for a phone, yeah. Remember this later at night when you're watching Cinderella Castle and the fireworks show is going on, you're going to see a ton of people taking photos with their flash and they're going to have a very well lit photo of the people about six feet in front of them. Oh man. But it's not going to do a thing for you for taking a photo of the castle or anything else. Those things are lit up already. You don't need to use flash at night on the castle or for the fireworks. And it makes a bit of like a white hazy film over the front of your photos. So everything gets like kind of misty, milky look washed over it which you don't want exactly so flash is going to be i mean it can look harsh but at least you get the shot that way but in certain situations particularly during daytime if you're going to be in shade and you just need to brighten someone's face turn on the flash if the sun is behind the person that you're taking the photo there's going to be the sensor inside of your camera is going to register all of that light and think oh i don't need to have a very bright exposure that's when you want to turn on a flash also yeah. because they the person's face is going to be dark yes so take a good look at the photo before you walk away. If it doesn't seem lit up properly, turn on the flash, take the shot again. Yeah, it doesn't hurt to try twice. At least the stuff you don't want. We talked a little bit about the technical stuff on the camera, but from composition, there's also storytelling. And when you go to Walt Disney World, any of the parks, there are the big things like Cinderella Castle or the Tree of Life, but there's also small little details. Don't forget to shoot the story of what's happening while you're there. There's going to be the food that you eat. There's going to be some of the merchandise. There's going to be little decorative things along the street or inside some of the buildings. Yeah. And Lee, you you actually really love going for the details. What are some things you look for? I, I do. I mean, I try and look at things. Well, I, I just remember, I mean, you you had a little ebook, the you know, thing like coffee table book. And it was mm -hmm. actually based on, you know, some hints and tips for Disney photography. But that's, um, that was some years ago when I bought that. And I, well, when I, when I, I didn't buy it because you gave it for free. But when I went through that and I used it, I started looking at things differently. I've always liked my detail shots. But for example, if I'm going and I've got a you know nice plate of fruit and cheese and I've got my shiny fork that comes with it, I have a look at the things that maybe the strawberries are a bright red. I'll actually cut into a strawberry and I'll zoom in and get really close. But I like to get in really tight on, on a detail. As I said before, before you zoom, see how close you can move before you lose focus. So there's, there's that, little textures, there are things, there's merchandise that has, you know, there's so much interesting merchandise to have these little displays in the, in the store windows. Mm -hmm. And there are little signs and details. You just challenge yourself to look around the parks. I mean, Disney is just, it seems to take forever to stop finding new things. And one of the little tips for the store windows, I mean, there's going to have a little glass front to it. If you're standing back from it, trying to get the whole thing in, you're going to get glare and you're going to see your reflection in the window. Yeah. Put your lens up against the glass. Yes. You may not necessarily get everything in there, but you know, there's another th trick you can use is you can put your phone in a panorama photo mode, put it up against the glass and then just kind of walk it along the scene and get the whole thing as a panorama. You can do that. So, and don't use the flash because you're going to get some, you, you're going to get the flare back. So yeah. that's not the time to use the flash. Also, if you wait until later in the day when you don't get such harsh shadows, um, you're going to get the lights. But if you do it just before it gets totally dark, your reflections are kind of at their lowest at that time. Does that make sense? It does. The detail shots, like I said, they're part of the overall story. And, and the advice that I got and I've, I've given to others is, since I got it is to think like a coffee table book. In other words, look at the whole story. They're going to be the big thing. If you're going to be going to Walt Disney World, the big thing that you're going to see there is going to be Cinderella Castle. It's going to be Main Street. It's going to be Space Mountain. Those are the huge things. But you want to go from large to small or from small to large. So when you walk into Walt Disney World, don't just look down Main Street. Look down. You might see that there's interesting marking in the asphalt. You might find some of the windows that are interesting because they, they'll put the names of key cast members along yes. those windows. You're going to find details, little hidden Mickeys throughout the park. Some of those things are, are nice little memories, things that you can find and discover. Then there's also 
actors and craftsmen that are working on Long Main Street. Yes. So as you're walking down Main Street, you look off to your right, and you're going to find there's a little glass shop there. And there are people actually back in there that are blowing glass. And, and they'll they'll pose for you. They'll make sure that you get a nice shot. They will. And same with people working, you know, in the, in the restaurant. I think Main Street Bakery as well. They have people behind the counters. Most of them are quite happy if you, you know, if you ask if you can take their photo. I usually ask first. I tend not to just take the shot. But I don't think they expect you to ask. So don't feel bad if you don't. I just, I, they They'll pose nicely for you if you do, which is an, an added plus. And if you want to take a photo of something that's a food item someplace and you just can't quite get to it, ask nicely. They'll usually probably accommodate you. Yeah. Food is an important part of your visit. So you might want to start off with, if you're in the parking lot, you might want to take pictures of the tram. If you're coming up on a bus, get pictures of the bus that was taking you back and forth from your resort. Get pictures of your resort if you're staying on site. Everything that you encounter is part of your story. Take pictures of all of it. There's plenty of places where you can uh, use those photos later on. And if you're thinking of making a coffee table book with it, you're not going to get very far if you only got like five major pictures and then no detail to go with it. That's true. I mean, get pictures as you're walking into the park as well, especially if you're there for park opening. You, know, you get the crowds in front where you turn around if you you're, if you got there really early and you're waiting for a long time. If you turn around and look behind you, you know with that feeling you get when you go, thank goodness I arrived so early because look how many people are back there. Yeah. Snap a photo of it. That's all kind of you, you can illustrate your point when you go and tell other people, you know, you try and explain something. It's very difficult to explain things sometimes without a visual. Yeah. And if you're early in Magic Kingdom in the morning, they'll have the horse and trolley out there. Yes. You know, take some pictures of the horse. Take some pictures of the detail of the leather on the horse, because that's going to be gone rather quickly. That horse has got the best job at Walt Disney World. Yeah. I mean, it works for like an hour or two and then it's got the rest of the day off. And if it's Independence Day or New Year's Eve or something and you're standing outside Space Mountain... Take a photo of the wait time because you got to see it to believe it. Exactly. So the the wait time, I didn't even think of that myself, but that all those are part of your stories. Like, did I wait a long time or did I get, you know, single rider fast pass to go through on something? And the queuing areas, there are so many details in the queuing areas. I mean, I think of a few like Tower of Terror, uh, Space Mountain's kind of tricky to do photos with an iPhone, but they actually don't come out terribly. And um, while you're waiting for that, if you're in the regular standby line, well, Haunted Splash Mansion, Mountain, ha Haunted Mansion, yeah. Yeah, Haunted Mansion has a ton of things. And if you really want to enjoy the queue and, and wait a while longer, they've they've kind of got two lines. Like you can go straight to get in or you can go through and enjoy all of those little thing, scenes that they've set up for you. Yeah. But we're just saying, think like a coffee table book. Think from large to small, from small to large. Cover every little aspect of your vacation. Yeah. That's really going to kind of help you. One, it's going to make you a better photographer if you're taking more photos. And two, when you get home, it's going to give you a better memory of your overall vacation. So it's not just the things that we're talking about in the park. It's not just the technical stuff. Make sure you also take pictures of your group, yourself, the folks that you're with and enjoying the park. Yes, absolutely. And maybe even cast members and people who help you out. Get pictures. They love to pose with you. you know, I've that, never had somebody tell me no. No, I don't think they will. And something that comes to mind is like you stayed at uh, French Quarter a number of times. Yeah. And there's that greeter over there. What's Oh, uh, Arnil. What does he do? He's, he's dressed up as... He's, he's, yeah, he's the magic maker. Magic maker. <laughs> yes. But he's there every time and he remembers you when you come back. He does. Do you have photos of him? I do, yes. And that, that's part of the story that, that you were experiencing when you guys were saying that. And he gives such a grand pose for anyone wanting to take a photo of him. <laughs> yeah, so don't don't be afraid to ask. I mean, the, yeah. worst, the worst thing that happens is, you know, maybe they, they can't or they will say no. no. I mean, obviously, if you see they're really busy, you might want to come back. But it, it, they're not going to say no just because they're not in the mood. Exactly. They know that this is part of your vacation. This is why they're there is they're there to help you have a wonderful time. That's why they're called cast members. They're part of a show, no matter what they're doing. Yes. We've got a couple of other tips over here for you. Smartphones are great, they're wonderful, they're portable, but they're also going to have some limitations. And those limitations are probably going to show up the most when you're in a dark area. Yeah, I think any anything with a basic camera, camera sensor is going to give you a challenge in low light. So dark rides and things like that, um, you're probably not going to get the best photos. You can try, you can have a look at it, but um, it's you're going to have a challenge with it. Well, I've, I've got, you know, my D800 it's got a large sensor inside. It's so wonderful in low light that it can see in the dark. But it struggles trying to take photos going through Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, I've, I've, I've never really had any great photos out of there. I mean, you're 
you work hard with a DSLR on that moving boat in the dark area trying to get some Even with there. a really expensive, fast, super fast, low light lens, um, so, it just wasn't going to get it. Exactly. So don't beat yourself up or wish that you'd done something else if, if you're working with your smartphone. Yeah, it's not you. It's the camera has limitations. And those are the times when maybe, you know what, it's time to put the camera aside and just say, it's not going to work here properly. Relax, enjoy yourself. If you're in an area where you can put up a, a little tripod and stabilize it and maybe have an app that'll let the shutter stay open for a while, it might be worth a shot. But you're in a moving ride like Haunted Mansion or Pirates of the Caribbean. I don't think you're really going to grab it. No, much. that's probably the only time you might pray for a breakdown. <laughs> Once you've taken your photos, you need to process them. It's the photos that you get inside of your camera app on your phone are basic. It documented something. But you want to be able to punch it up a little bit. And we'll talk about a couple of the apps that will do things. And we'll talk about some of the techniques that you can use to make that a little bit better. Yeah, that's right. I just want to say one of the other limitations of, of um, using a smartphone over and above it, this, you know, a bigger, more expensive and capable camera, is going to be um, one of the things. You've got quite a wide lens that comes as a default. So sometimes your um, your portraits, especially if you get too close, are going to distort the, the face. Bear that in mind when you're taking pictures of people. Um, well, it's a good point with, with wide angle lenses anyways. And there's a couple of things you can do. One is if you're going to take photos of somebody with a wide angle lens, try to keep them on a horizontal plane. So in other words, what I'm saying is if someone's reaching toward you and their arm is out or their hand is out reaching towards the camera, their hand is going to look enormous and their head is going to look yeah. tiny. But if they keep their arms by their side or they're, you know, just kind of, I don't know, it's like they're maybe they're holding themselves, something like they're holding their shoulder or they've got their arms wrapped around their body. They're kind of on the same plane. Yeah. And that's that's going to look much more normal than if there is some kind of change in your subject with a distance between the camera and where they're standing. That's right. Yeah. The other thing you can do is there are third party lenses that you can find. One that comes to mind is called Allo Clip, and they kind of just clip right over your iPhone. Not sure if they've got them. They probably do that work with Android phones as well. But basically, these are lenses that you can slip on over there and they will kind of magnify or give you a bit of a telephoto or maybe even more of a fish eyed look, depending on what you're going for. But take a look at Clip. Matter of fact, we'll put uh, a link to them in the show notes and give you an idea of what kind of uh, add on lenses you can use. Yeah, you can have a lot of fun. I mean, do you remember what they cost? I don't know what they cost now. No, um, I don't. I'll, I'll have to take a look but, and put um, it in the notes. Fish eyes. I mean, you can have some real fun with fish eyes. Fish eyes are not meant to take photos of people. But if you're with a really fun group and you don't mind goofing around, you want to get some really funny photos, you guys can have a blast with a fish eye. It's know. just really funny. You know what? If you've got some of those street performers and you get a fish eye and just put it right up in their face and, and take the shot, you know, don't don't annoy them, obviously. But if they're going to pose for you and you say, "I look, I need to get this right up there, and they'll say, okay, go for it. Yeah. Especially the Hollywood studios, those, you know, the, those kind of people. Mm -hmm. um, you never know. You might get a Dapper Dan just really stick his nose at you. Oh, I've had one of those as well. I didn't have a fish eye, though. Now that you mention it, that would have been funny. See, He's something to go back right up there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, we talked about a couple of apps. We're, there are so many, we cannot possibly go over all of them. So we picked just a few that uh, we've tried. Some of them we've heard of that other people have had good success with. So we want to share this with you. And, of course, we'll put links to these in the show notes in case you want to try them out for yourself. But let's start with probably one of the most popular ones, and that's Instagram. Yep, it's built into Instagram. In fact, I never really thought about using it as an app for editing my photos because that's not the primary one that I use. But when I saw it, I started playing around with it. I mean, it doesn't do a bad job. It's got a lot of filters. I know that filters are really popular. People like to put their little color cast or their wash over it. It's not my thing. But we have a 14-year-old and she loves them. So we're obviously oh. just not cool enough. So it's not to say don't use them. If that's your thing, you you know, you can have some fun right there in Instagram and then post them post them as they, you know, as, as you're ready to do so. And also you can make collages in Instagram. Um, you've got some basic layout options. You can, um, you need to install the, the little program called Layout and it prompts you to do that. It, you know, it'll ask you if you want to make a collage and if you just click on the little icon, it will get you to install Layout. There's no, no charge, it's free. You get some various options. You can have like some horizontal options some vertical options, square ones, and, you know, kind of mix things in there. It's pretty basic, but you you can have some fun with it. As far as editing the photos themselves, it, it gives you the basic adjustments so you can, you know, increase your exposure. That's how bright or how dark your, your photo is. Um, you can play with the shadows and highlights a little bit. Um, you can increase the saturation if you need brighter colors or if you need to reduce the color if you're looking for something a little bit more faded. 
And it's also got a, I think it's got a tilt shift option as well, which is kind of fun if you want to play with something like that. And something that's nice in the Instagram app um, for editing is that it gives you a leveling option. Even with my big camera, I just have a terrible lean. I always lean to one particular side when I take a photo. So all my things need to be straightened. And this this allows you to do it on a vertical and on a horizontal plane. So you, you can adjust your photo if you kind of weren't quite straight with the horizon. So that's a nice option to have. The other little thing that I saw on, on the Instagram app um, for editing that didn't seem to be on anything else, that not that I've noticed or that I've used, is once you've edited something, for example, you'll edit your, you know, under the, the color heading, you go back and you get all your options and have a look at it. There'll be a little dot that appears underneath color. So when you have a look at the, your, your options for editing, you can see what you have adjusted and what you haven't. So if you need to go back in and, and tweak something again, you can do so. And if you've missed something, you can see straight away that you haven't touched it yet. One of the things that I've found when I'm taking photos with my iPhone, for the most part, I'm not using these apps to take the photo. I'm just using them to process it afterwards. That's true, but you can take a photo with your camera um, and upload it straight to Instagram. You can also upload videos uh, onto there. That, that's a, it's useful. Yes. The reason that I don't take the photo inside of uh, most of these apps is because I want it, I want the regular photo to go inside of my photos folder and then I can use it in multiple apps later on if I need to. Well, I'm the same. And also I've, you know, I've eventually settled a year or two back on a, a favorite photo editing app, something that works for me. And what works for me is not necessarily going to work for the next person. So you need to play around and find what works for you and, and stick with that or a combination of a few things if you need to do so. Okay. All right. So let me go over. The, I've got a, a number of uh, apps on my phone. And honestly, I always reach for the same one. And the one that I like is Camera Plus. Now, it's got uh, two sides to it. Obviously, there's the part where you can shoot, and it's got a little bit more control than what you would have just using the built-in camera app. If you want to take a macro shot, there's a section for that. You've got uh, three basic crops. You know, it's kind of, you can do a square, you can do the normal crop of what the phone is, and another one that's, that's kind of a bit more of a 16 by 9 kind of crop. And it does have a little bit of a built-in stabilizer. It's not going to handle tremendous shake. But, you know, just for your little hand shake it's it's actually done a fairly good job of that it helps yeah you know you can take a normal shot you've got a timer on there if you just want to set the phone someplace and then you know get in front of the camera yeah. and take your photo so you need a phone with a timer the camera here has that and of course there's also a burst mode so if you're taking action shots and you don't know which one is going to be the i mean it's, it's sometimes with a smartphone it's kind of hard to hit the time a shot just right so you may want to do that burst mode for kind of a spray and pray and hope that you yes. get the photo it but, usually works it, it usually does. I, I don't really use that very much. What I what I like about Camera Plus is doing the editing. So I will switch it out of the camera mode and move it over to, you know, the post-processing mode. And then I'll just, you know, hit the plus sign and I'll import a photo. And it could be the latest photo that I've taken, or I can just go and select a photo from any one of my folders. And once I've done that, it's just got a number of choices. So for example, hang on, let's select this recent photo here. Sorry, I'm kind of walking myself through it. And then you hit the import button that brings it in here. And then you've got an immediate option to edit, share, or save it off as a, as a new photo where you process it. Nine times out of 10, I'm going to do something very simple. I'm going to hit the clarity button. And then I'm going to go over to frames and put on just a uh, vignette. And nine times out of 10, that actually works nicely. Yeah, you're going to explain... Sorry, I'm knocking things. I'm, I'm breaking the office. Oh, I hate it when um, that happens. Are you going to explain what a vignette is for those people who aren't like okay. crazy into the photography stuff? A vignette is where you kind of darken the edges a little bit. You don't want to do it too much. And this one actually does it a little bit more than I want to. The reason being is your eye is drawn to the place that's brightest and then to the place that's sharpest. So if you put a vignette around, it means the bright part is inside of the frame. The sharpest part is going to be inside of the frame. So in other words, you're kind of subconsciously helping people look in deep inside of your photo rather than just kind of going right across it and saying, yeah, that's nice. You put the vignette on there and it holds their attention a little bit longer. They kind of see what you're up to and, and what you're doing there. Once you've got inside, there are a number of options as far as how you want to process it. You can change the white balance. You can, they've got the presets on here if you want to do it for food or portraits or something is backlit because they'll kind of brighten the face of somebody if you didn't put some light on it. There are a number of different crops. They've got filters on here. We were talking about Instagram and all the filters they have. There are plenty of filters on here, which I find absolutely atrocious. <laughs> I really do. 
But and they've also got a little add-on packs. So if you want to spend ninety nine cents on the what well, a Hollywood pack is one of them, you can get more filters. If that's your thing, that's great. They've got plenty built in, and you can also buy more where they've got a little store that's kind of built into it. That's really why I love this thing is because I can add clarity. And if you're not familiar with the concept of clarity, what it's doing is it's adding a bit of sharp to and your contrast photo. Contrast as well. Yes, it's adding contrast. And most of my post processing, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bump up the contrast a bit, not a whole lot. Lee and I both kind of know that if you move a slider all the way to one side or the other, you've got a bad photo to begin with. Yeah, It's kind of like being a pilot, you know, a small moves. You want to do the same thing with your post processing. You want to add a little bit of contrast. You might want to add a little bit of clarity that kind of brings out the detail. Let's say if you're taking a photo of something with texture or a person that maybe has some wrinkles and you just want to enhance those a little bit, but not make them look garish. You just add a little bit of clarity to that and a little bit of sharpening and maybe some vibrance. Vibrance is different than saturation where vibrance kind of protects skin tone, but it enhances other colors. So it'll make the green a little bit greener. But if you're taking a photo of yourself, it's not going to make you look orange. It almost gives a, a bit of a glow, a soft glow to the existing colors as they've been captured rather than increasing the intensity and making them look kind of, yeah, crazy. I, like I said, I've got a number of apps on there, but I kind of go for camera plus. I'll, I'll Most of the time I'll take my photos with just the built-in app. iPhone has, you know, you can do a little bit of editing inside of that app, but I don't find it to do quite what I want to. I can I can do it better inside of uh, Camera Plus. The same. And I mean, I'm happy with the with the default iPhone, you know, for for basic adjustments um, with, with the editing that's inbuilt. But I've, as I say, I've got my go-to, which is a little bit different to Camera Plus. I also have Camera Plus. I like the macro shots option that's in the camera there. And that, that works really well. This is like mostly for the food photos or for something else? Um, Really just anything. I mean, the other night I did that close-up of the wine bottle cork. Oh, that's I, right. I've got a bottle of wine, and when I peeled the foil on the top of the cork, it said cheers. I just thought it was really cute. <laughs> just silly little things like that make me smile. So I took a photo of it. Um, but I think what you want to remember with this, you know, when, when William said use the sliders carefully, less is more. Think about it like makeup for your photos. You you really just want to, you want to enhance what you've already captured. You don't want to manipulate stuff unless you're going for a kind of weird look. It's probably not what you're going to do with your memories. My favorite photo uh, editing app is just called Photo Editor. Now, I've got this on iPhone. I think it's available for Android, and I think it's under the same name. I'd, I'd have to double check that. It offers possibly a little bit less on the free version, which is all that I have, by the way. Have you got the paid version of Camera Plus? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you've got paid. You see, mine's just free, so I, I could get more with it, but I'm more than happy. And I think one of the things that I like is I like vignettes. Um, and William was explaining about, you know, using the vignettes to draw your eye to the, the, you know, to the center of the photo. Now on Camera Plus, it will put that vignette there so that your um, your brightest spot is in kind of in the central area of the photo. I have a tendency to never put my subject in the middle of the photo, which means that I don't want my vignette there. And I think that's one of the reasons why I like the photo editor, because you can actually move the vignette where, you know, where you want it to go. I just saw him playing with frosty white edges. I know. It's a little inside thing, but we don't like frosty white edges. I'm going to tell everybody your reputation is going down the toilet. No, I'm, I'm playing with a vignette on on Camera Plus, and there's there's two places where you can get a vignette. Then I, I got busted here because she saw me doing this. I saw the white edges. Okay, so on the bottom row, they've got a section for frames. If you choose the vignette from there, it just slaps on a vignette that you can't modify. There's nothing you can do. But in the middle of the bottom row, there's a thing called the lab. And that's where you get a lot of options to modify what your photo is. I mean, you can change the tint. You can make a duotone. You can do soft focus. You can add film grain. You can sharpen it. You can blur it. All, all those fun little things you can do. You can change the exposure. But they also have a vignette there at the very end. And this vignette comes with two sliders. You drag it to the left, and you get a dark vignette. You drag it to the right, and you get a white vignette. And white, frosty vignettes are just horrible i don't know why they used to be there was the time when they were popular in like wedding photos that was seen as a romantic look well it anyways it defeats the whole purpose of a vignette if you brighten the edges you're gonna have someone's eye just go straight off the frame okay so i don't know why that's there unless you just your photo is so bad that you want to show it but yet you don't want people to actually look at it and use a white vignette but it, it might have been there from the uh, you know from the beginning when they they launched the app. I mean, there was a bit of a trend for it. It's you you either love it or hate it. It it, it didn't bite me. So and, uh, and the other slider I was talking about is 
the size of the vignette. So in other words, you drag it all the way to the right and it really narrows the vignette down to just the center of your frame, whereas you bring it over to the other side, it only kind of darkens the edges and you basically, you can change it from anywhere in between. So you don't really need that strong of a vignette for most of the things. You just kind of want a very subtle, almost, you don't want someone to notice your vignette. No, it's, it's a subtle thing. Again, it's the less is more. I think with any of these things, you're going to find that less is more. Just enhance what you've got and don't be so hard on yourself. You've probably taken a good photo and everybody's photos now and again need a bit of tweaking. I mean, most of the time we want to adjust at least something well, on every, there. Every photo needs sharpening. Every photo, I think, ought to have a little bit of a vignette, some contrast. Yeah, but you, you're going to find your own style. You're going to find what kind of best reflects how you see things and what you like right now. And the other thing about photo editor and yours, uh, does Camera Plus have the ability to put in frames and oh, yeah. text and stickers? Oh, I don't know about stickers. You mm. can do you can do different frames, but there are a different class of apps. If you want to make some of those, what what do we call those things? The social media image editing apps. Yeah, that's maybe another topic. But yeah. there's um, yeah, you can do that. But I I know that on Photo Editor you can add text. I don't really use it very often because I've got different apps that I prefer for that for versatility. But if you want to do something for a quick um, social media share or upload, you can have some fun with that on there as well. Yeah, Camera Plus I don't think has anything on here for text. I'm, I'm looking through it and, and I don't see anything like that. They've got some presets and then you go to the lab and you can do some things, but those are all about the image. They're, they're real. Oh, actually I take it back. I, here's one for text. Hmm. Oh, I, damn, I was correct, hoping that my app was better than yours. Nope. Uh, camera plus is best. There you go. <laughs> uh, just because I hit it doesn't mean I made it work though. <laughs> <laughs> it's a blank screen. <laughs> yeah. It's like, so it's the text may be just a block. <laughs> I, I haven't played with that part of it, but okay. You've got Snapseed. I do. Um, you told me about Snapseed. I installed Snapseed. Um, you said it was pretty good. I can see how some people might find it's pretty good. Um, that that app's gone from my phone. It, I, I was unimpressed. I was very underwhelmed by it. Oh, wait um, a minute. Hold on. I, I, I get to use Lee's theme now. What? This is our theme. Lee's got a theme. She's got an opinion, and you're entitled <laughs> to it. <laughs> I always have opinions. I like to share them. <laughs> Let it roll. Okay, look, Snapsy. I mean, that was just like a waste of download space. I mean, I've just freed up the space for something more useful on my my um, phone. It just gets these great reviews. And I've heard about Snapseed. I know you've got Snapseed, so I figured it must be good if you've got it. Uh, no, uh, that's not... That's, really? I got, I got it because everybody else told me how great it was. And well, honestly, you told me I should... You asked me, have you tried Snapseed? I said, no. And the way you said, well, you should, I thought, oh, I'd better try it. Well, I said you should because you ought to at least make an opinion of it. I didn't oh. I didn't necessarily say you should use it. I said you should at least try it and see if oh, you man, like it. That was just a waste of, of like 15 minutes <laughs> of my life. I'll never get back. I'm going to have to wait for the thing to download. Okay, that didn't take too long. But I spent some time working around. I went and looked at a video tutorial. I thought I must be missing something. It really is pretty basic. It doesn't offer anything special. And I think the thing that I didn't like about this is that it's got um, it, these, this sliding version on the screen to control things. And I just found it fiddly. It, it, it was just a pain. I kept hitting the wrong thing. And I usually don't have problems working. I mean, I've got a touch screen phone. I use an iPhone, so I don't have problems working on the screen. But this was just, it didn't work for me. And I, I didn't think that it offered anything special. In fact, it seemed to have a little bit less than some of the other apps had. So either I'm missing something or it's just not for me. But yeah, Snapseed's an option. It's worth looking at. It might work for you. But for me, waste of time, waste of space. And there's Lee's opinion. Yeah. <laughs> honestly, honestly I, I look at it. And, and Snapseed is kind of a preset thing where you've got some options that you don't find in some of the other apps. And it's it depends upon your preference and style. So, for example, I open up in filters. They've got a lens blur. They have a glamour glow, which is kind of like a softening effect. You've seen this in different beauty and portrait shots before. They've got uh, features on here like grunge, which you just tap that. And there's a couple of settings that you can just kind of slide your thumb back and forth and go through various settings. And matter of fact, if you just drag your thumb over it, you'll see it go through some of the changes. Grunge is really just a texture and desaturated color. And it's, it's nothing I'm ever going to use. But tonal contrast is kind of like uh, clarity. And you can really bring out some details with that. It depends, again, you know, depending upon your taste. Is it a great app? Uh, some people really love this. I've I've not found myself really needing to use it. But it, you've got the left and right swipe, and then you've got the up and down swipe. And 
you kind of using your finger to dial around the screen. I, I guess until you get a feel for what what motion does what, you, you, well, you're kind of working blind. Well, here, here's the way I look at it. There are people who get a camera app and what they want to do is they want to play with all the options. They don't necessarily are out there trying to make a good photo. They want to play with all the options. This is one of the apps that you get if you want to play with a bunch of different options. And then you select one and it may be a hideous photo, but it's yours because you took it and you put all these combinations of filters on it. Well, some people find places to share what would be hideous photos, but they might be having some fun with something. I mean, you know, if it's your thing, go for it. Maybe I'm just too old to appreciate this. But I just for I, I just felt that with Snapseed, it wasn't offering a lot of the options that other apps offer. And quite honestly, for you can go to plenty of other free apps and get even more. If it's filters and things that you want saying, there are other free apps that offer more. There's one called Photor, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. I was going through some tutorials on it. They they boast 100 plus effects on there. Now, when I started to scroll through there, I thought it was actually, I guess it's great in terms of options. That sounds wonderful. You know, you've got 100 plus things, but where do you start? If you don't know what you're looking for and you don't know what how they've named these things, it's, it, it can be a little bit overwhelming. But if that's what you're wanting, it's it's probably worth a look. Um, it's got a quick enhance tool and it's got an intensity slider. And that's really nice when you do an auto correct or an auto fix or something you can play around with the the intensity of it. Sometimes it gives a little bit too much or a little bit too little. And having that that option is, is useful. Now, one of the things you I thought you liked, though, is they can make collages. I like collages. What, what on the Photora? Yes. App. I, that, that's what caught my attention because a lot of people like to make collages. I like to make collages. Tove likes to make collages. It's just a fun way to share a bunch of photos if you want to do one post, especially on social media, or if you maybe you want to print a postcard or something. I guess I look at Snapseed and, and Photor and some of these ones that have a lot of effects you know, and presets in them as overcooked photography. It can be. Now, I know that there's a there's a bit of a trend for some of these looks. You know, you've got these color wash things. It's it's not it's not for me. It's popular that there are people who really like it. And if you're not really wanting to waste time doing things and this is the kind of look that you're going for, a lot of these things give you a one, you know, one or two click quick fix. If you want to play around and have fun with them, I'm not saying don't use them. I, I, I actually would encourage you to go out and try a few of these and see what works for you. See if you can find some stuff that you like. I'd say if you have a background in graphic design, you you understand, you know, how colors work together and how they work with a photograph and you want to change them and you want to have a bunch of options to make them work that way, then these tools are fine. If you don't have that background, then I think you're just going to be playing over there and say, oh, that looks pretty. Oh, that's ugly. And that's going to be the extent of your experience. Yeah. And uh, one, of the, one of the popular ones that's out now is called Visco, but it's spelled just V-S-C-O. I've seen some really beautiful photos taken on the uh, iPhone and then processed with Visco, and you can get some really nice detailed looks from the presets. And then, of course, there are others that, my favorite word for these things, are hideous. Yes. <laughs> but the thing with, with Visco is that it's got some really advanced camera settings as well. You've got your manual camera options if you want to do that. And it also has a social media platform. You can go in and share your photos. You've got some privacy control if you want to do that. But you can set set up a profile on Visco. It's kind of almost like an Instagram, I would I would say, where um, you, you can share things and interact with, with other people and, and get little comments and interaction on the things you post if you want to do that. So there are, that, that offers you different options. Well, it's got a bit of a community to go with it. So it, it it's does. Like, it's like, look what I created. Yep. I'd, I'd say... Try a few of these, you know, try all of them, try and see if you see something different that we haven't covered, because there are many. The, we just took a few that came up repeatedly as, as popular options. Try it, try them out, and you're probably going to win one. You're probably going to win more than one. You are at first, I think. You're going to see which ones you end up going to the most. For example, I said Camera Plus is the one that I just keep going back to over and over again. Some of the others I've got on there are for special purposes. And that's kind of what we want to talk about. You know, what if, what if you want to do fireworks? Well, as I mentioned, for fireworks, you want to be able to control the shutter speed beyond the one second mark. You want to, some of those bursts, you're going to have open, the shutter shutter open for a few seconds while they go yeah. up. So that means you want some stability as well, so it doesn't get all blurry. Otherwise, you get these like squiggly things. And you're going to need to find an app that, for your camera, that will allow you to control the shutter speed. You're going to need to find a little tripod that you can get some stability. And, and I'll tell you one thing, if you're planning on shooting fireworks and you think you're going to set your phone on the garbage can at Walt Disney World, don't. Because 
one, even though you're standing there, other people are going to come up and they're going to put the garbage in the can. They're going to shake the thing. Yeah, it, it's not a good place. And two, someone's going to stand right in front of that garbage can. Oh, you're guaranteed. Well, there's nothing you can do. I mean, there's nowhere else to stand. You've got to be, at, there's so many garbage cans down there and, you know, especially in Main Street. Well, um, but you can use a railing. You do actually get a Gorilla Pod and, and you know, similar items for iPhone. I think one of the best things to do is probably get a little bit off center. So everybody kind of, they line up almost straight down Main Street to watch yeah. things right over the, the castle. But you know what? You get off to the side and you can have a lot of room to yourself yeah. and then still have a, a unique view of the castle with the fireworks going on that most people aren't going to have to take photos. Yeah, see what you can do. Dark rides. We kind of mentioned that a little bit. Good luck. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, I wish mean, I could I've, be more positive about I've, that. I've had more um, misses than hits, even even with a really expensive camera camera and good lenses on dark rides. And it's not just that you you actually have to practice and do a bit of homework and get to understand how you know how to do these things. So if it's not working with your iPhone, it's not you. The camera is just not not cut out to do this. And then we also talked about you know wet rides, rainy days, water parks. Get something to protect your phone from the environment. But you can take some fantastic shots you know, in the water parks or on a wet ride. Yeah, I mean, I often read on, on forums and I, you know, I see, you know, people commenting on, on things that get posted on websites and they're asking about a good waterproof camera and they're on a strict budget and that. The only time I ever used a waterproof camera was at Disney World because I don't otherwise tend to go out in, you know, in the, the rain. Now I say the only time I use the waterproof camera is the only time that I wanted one. I never ended up investing in one. What I did do, well, because I'm cheap, I bought I bought a, an, an iPhone camera patch on Amazon of all places. I don't remember what I paid for it. It was about, it was definitely well under 10 bucks with free shipping. And it had like a neck strap, which I actually replaced with my own lanyard because it was more comfortable. And um, it's got, had like a triple, almost like a Ziploc bag, you know, those clip and seal things. It was like a triple seal thing. It was clear on both sides. So you could see, you know, the, the, front screen of the camera and the lens was open as well. And as long as you make sure that it's clean, you try and keep it dry on the outside. You know, what I'm saying is free of smudges for glare and, and you know, murky things. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to get a locker or anything. I had my phone with me at all times. And I took pictures on the Kali River Rapids, in Typhoon Lagoon, the wave pool. And those are great places pools. to take it. But not only that, if you're going to Walt Disney World, especially in the summer, expect a rainstorm at some point. But you know what? Some of the best photos I've taken out at Walt Disney World were either during or just after a rainstorm. You get that nice little sheen on on the sidewalk, on the roads out there. Yeah. And it, and particularly if it's like around sunset or time when some of the lights are coming on, you just get a glow yes. out, out of these lights that is is wonderful. So don't be afraid of shooting in the rain or in the wet conditions, but just be prepared for it. Yeah, soft light. So pretty. Exactly. All right. We hope this has helped you out a little bit, but most of all, have fun on your vacation. If you can get the shot, don't worry about all the things that we've talked about. Get the shot because most importantly, you want to have your memories. The things that we're talking about here are keep them in mind and apply them where they suit you best. Thank you very much for joining us on the Orlando Local Show. This is episode three, which if you want to find show notes, go to orlandolocal.com slash three, just the number three. We're going to have a transcript out there of this show. If you want to remember what we said, don't worry, it's in writing. All you've got to do is go there, click on the link to get the free transcript, and we'll send it to you by email. We're also going to have some links out there for some of the items that we talked about. So you've got a link to go find some of the apps that we were looking at and the auto clip stuff. Finally, we want to tell you once again, thank you very much. We really appreciate you being here, and we hope to see you again next week.